Hey guys, Jim Bells with Motorhome Rehab Ranch on Patreon and, and Co-op Motorworks, and I have my assistant here, Jason, is going to be showing some magic here. He had a great idea. So we were out back talking about suspension on this and how to put them together and different things, and, I, and he said, wait, 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 hey, stop. Let's go get the video. Scarlett, go get the video. Let's talk about this. I'm going to show you guys what's happening here. And... Um, <clears throat> so next time you call me, I'm going to tell you to go see this video, okay? All right. We're going to talk about front suspension, specifically upper control arms, or A-arm, or lower control arm, or lower A-arm, okay? Now, let's talk about lower first, because that's really a really important issue, okay? The lower control arm has a big ass bushing, okay? It has two of them in here, and the torsion bar is connected to it, so that thing does not want to move, okay? It handles all of the stress, the weight, and everything on the ball joint that goes in there. Now, if you noticed, all these that I'm going to show you in a minute are all in uh, move boxes. Well, this one isn't. This is a lower ball joint. And I've said this a couple of times, and you're probably tired of hearing about it. But uh, Applied, GMC, and Kim, uh, Jim Kanamata, had these made for us. We had 500 of them made. So we have 500 ball joints left in the community. I mean, we only get a couple. Depends on how you're going to keep your motor home. All the weights on this ball joint. <clears throat> now, I'm going to put a ball joint in. It's got a bolt on each side on the wings. It's got a big nut here. Okay. Now, not maybe, not if, not sometimes, but when you bolt this into this A arm, right here, in here like that, nut and bolt will go in here, through here. If you do not destroy the threads or tack weld that nut on there, it will back out. It'll just back out. Happened to me, okay? So, uh, hand me that, a, that lower A-arm. I want to show you something. Now, this is an lower A-arm with 35 years of patina on it. It's fine. Scarlett will show closer pictures of this later. This is the hole for the ball joint. And this would go in here like this, running out in a bolt throat here. Over the years, the hole has become oblong because that bolt has moved. Now, if you have this situation, they supply you bolts. But this bolt will be too small for this slot. So you want to get a 10 millimeter bolt, re-drill that hole, and put a bolt that fits that hole now, okay? And then when you put it in, destroy the threads. Take a punch and punch the threads after the bolt's tight. So it will not back out. It will not get loose. It will not wobble around like this one did. Now, good, I looked in this one. You see, that's a round hole. Good. Our A-arm here, by the way, the owner, <laughs> is a good A-arm. This one's going to have to be drilled. Also, if you look at this, because this holds all the weight, this is a Tornado A-arm that they welded plates on it. You see right here? They welded plates. Now, when you're redoing your ball joint, you got a nut on the top. It goes through here. Check here to see if there's any cracks because the weight is right here and you'll see cracks in here. Uh, mine broke off on <laughs> my 73. 73s were a little bit lighter. It doesn't mean you, you don't want them. It just means that they realized it was a problem and they made it a little bit stronger in the later models. But if you're doing your uh, lower ball joints, make sure that things not cracked. If it is, you gotta, you gotta weld it up, turn it down. Okay, very important. So the ball joint 
in the lower control arm is a K5222 move. They still make it for us. Okay. This is what it looks like. There's two in a box. One, two. You can see here there's two. <laughs> the way you put it in, you can see there's two pieces of metal here, and this is pressed into both holes. Now, it's in there tight, so you got to press it out. Well, how can you do that? Because it'll collapse. You put a piece of metal in here, a piece of socket or a metal plate, so when you push on this, it won't deform these two pieces of metal. Put a plate in here. You push it out, and then, and then uh, when you go push the new one in, it won't, uh, uh, it won't deform going back. There you go. Thank you, Scarlett. It won't deform going back in. You want to you want to support those two things in the middle. Push that, press that in. Okay. Very important. Now these are available, and the ball joints are available at uh, GMC specialty dealers. Okay. Uh, that's why we're here. All right. So that's that's the lower. Now the upper. Bring that beautiful bean footage. <laughs> this is an upper A arm, okay? These bushings are how you adjust your alignment because what it does, the adjusters in here, and here's, here's one of the adjusters, goes in here, and as you turn that bolt, this will go back and forth. Here, let's show that. Hang on, let me get this nut back on there. I don't want it to fall apart. All right, now, what he's going to do is he's going to move the adjuster bolt, the eccentric. And as it does, you can see how, see how it's rolling back? See that? This is how you adjust your alignment. Okay? See that? See how it moves back and forth. You got the front and the back. We're only doing the background right now, but you can do both of them and it'll move back and forth. Now, it's real important if you, that's good, if you, uh, turn it again a little bit more. I'm try to get this out of there. Yeah. Now, if you are going to do this job, you can buy new uh, uh, adjuster bolts, but this part of the new adjuster bolt is soft steel. And if you turn it like he's doing, it'll rip out the hole. If you have original eccentrics that have a little raised part like that, cherish them. Spooge that thing down real good and get them loose. Get those bolts loose and reuse these. On this frame we're doing, all parts are new, except for these. These are better, and we want to use those, okay? So keep that in mind when you're, uh, when you're doing your front end. Don't throw everything away. Keep it all until the last, all right? Now, here's something else. <clears throat> this, is, this is something that w uh, when we stopped uh, explanations, that he said, this is real good for everybody, all right? Now, this is a 12,000 pound projectile, okay? When you hit a railroad track or a curb, there ain't nothing is God's green earth that's gonna stop this thing from, from really hurting something. If you put plastic bushings here, some people wanna put uh, energy, what are they called, energy suspension, something, bushings. If you do that and you hit a big bump, the rubber in here is what softens the load. If you stiffen that up, somewhere in this frame is going to crack. You're going to put stress on the frame because the bushings are rubber to keep that stress from getting to the frame. Now, if you have a race car, you want to put in plastic bushings. We're not a race car, and we don't want plastic bushings. Okay? So don't go to energy source for bushings. Go to Moog. Now, very important, bushings, like this bushing, you can see the hole for that bushing is right in the middle. See that? Right in the middle. Okay. Generally speaking, you put two bushings, one on each side, and then the eccentric will go in and out to give your adjustment. 45 years says that this front wheel has hit a curb. It's hit a pothole. <laughs> It's hit the side of the road. It's hit something. 
in just about every coach that I've ever dealt with, the frame is girt. Just a little. Bent just a little bit. Now, if we put all this stuff new in, and say that frame was just bent just a little, and you couldn't see it, because it just happened, you know, half a dozen curves, you know. <clears throat> when they go to adjust it, it's been hit. So this is pushed back. You see what I mean? If, if the tire hits and this, it gets stress on it and it pushes back and it'll push the frame. Well, when you go to get the adjustment, caster, you want about two degrees caster. You want roll back about two degrees, okay? Why? The lighter, the more caster you have, the lighter the wheel is. The easier it is to go straight ahead. The less caster you have, the tighter the wheel is and the more you've got to drive it, okay? So we want to have a positive caster. But in that this side's been hit, you may not be able to achieve a two degrees caster on this side because it's been hit. So then you get 1.4, and then you put 1.4 over there, and now the thing drives like a truck, okay? Points in, in caster make a big difference, okay? So on this back one, so we want to try to roll it back further because this could be hit. Now, if it's not, that's fine. But if it is hit, when your alignment guy goes to do the alignment, he may not be able to get two degrees with the bushings in the middle. Ah, technology, look at that. Offset bushing, okay? So when this side here, we put the offset to the inside, so this, when he adjusts it, it will roll back further to compensate if it's hit a curb. Make sense? Now it may not have, and if it didn't hit the curb, an offset bushing will adjust just like a standard bushing. But if it did hit the curb, this offset bushing, it's a Moog K7104. This bushing will allow you to roll it back further. Since I started, I was told this, I'm not a smart guy. I was told this at a, guy, a mechanic when I was at Clasco in 1991, and we've been doing it to every coach, every time. Um, Jason called our alignment guy and asked him what he thought. He said, well, you know, I've never had a problem. Every time he did alignment, <laughs> it was good. You know why? Because they had 7104s in it. Okay. So the front control arm bushing, a, the, the front bushing is a K7006 Moog. That's the regular it, bushing. This offset bushing is a K7104. And when you get the box, it's pointed out to me, you've got to have something to, to press into this, this uh, sleeve in here. So they give you these separate. You press these in. Okay? So to do an upper A arm, you get a standard bushing and an offset bushing, okay? The upper ball joint is a uh, K5238. These are still available from Moog. Thank you very much. This, this upper ball uh, joint is also used in a Tornado. This lower ball joint is not. The taper in here is larger than a Tornado tape. Okay, so the lower ball joint from a Tornado will not interchange. You go ask Napa, they say they will. Sorry, won't do it. Upper ball joint's pretty simple. Again, there are four bolts. Goes through, right into here. The original ones, like this one, is riveted in. See that? There's rivets on there. That means that's an original upper ball joint. Upper ball joints go out about one to every five of the, uh, of the lower. So the uppers are pretty good. If you had to uh, uh, not do literally everything, if you get in there and this thing is tight, you could probably keep it. 
okay? Uh, but again, when you put these four bolts on here, ping the threads, destroy the threads, or they will back out on the lowers and the uppers, okay? Now, your alignment guy, when you do all this and get it all set up, don't expect the alignment guy to do your steering and your, you do that. We did a video about um, mechanical, what was it called? Uh, mechanical review. Yep. And we talked about how to shake the front end. You need to do that. You need to call me or, and we need to decide what parts, I told you how to check it out. Decide what parts you need no, chance, no, no reason to, to fudge it. <laughs> you got to put all those parts in. Got to do all that. You got to do this. And now when you go to the alignment guy, right, he's going to have no problem. The alignment's going to be a simple thrust alignment. Any truck, truck shop can do it, you know. So these are the kind of things that uh, are unique to this motorhome. And these are the things that we want to try to help you understand and, and to integrate into your coach, okay? Boy, it's hot in Florida. Phone overheated. <laughs> so we're back. Well, look, that's about it. I appreciate your time. I hope this helps you understand your, uh, your front suspension, your A-arms, and what to do if it gets to that. You say, when to do it? Look at your, a look at your bushing. If the bolt is in the middle and it's not an offset bushing, you're okay. If it's all weather cracked and the bushing has dropped, time for bushings. All right, thanks a lot. Call if I can help, see you next time. Hey guys, so uh, wrapping this up, this video is just kind of an overview of things. Um, we're gonna do more in depth of each of the components um, on our Patreon videos. So, you know, those will be coming up at some point don't look for them right away but you know in the next month or two hopefully we'll get to those and then you know we'll have more detailed more accurate you know like with a lot more close-ups and stuff like that of each component and how you can take it apart put it together stuff like that and the tools needed um, so hope you uh enjoyed it and if you made it this far then you know good job so all right see you guys